So here's my fifth generation iPod Nano. It's actually in pretty good condition for its age. It doesn't have too many scratches on it. And uh, it does still work, although unfortunately this has suffered basically the same fate as many others. The battery has expanded and it presses the LCD out. As you can see, the glass on the top has actually slightly pressed out. And uh, yeah, this is really common and it is a bit tricky to repair, but we'll give it a go. So I've purchased a new battery. On the end of the iPod, I just want to use my heat gun over here on a very low heat just to soften the adhesive holding this bottom plate on. I'm going to remove this bottom plate and then there's, I believe, three screws under that. Turning our attention to this side, we're going to do the same here, apply some heat and I believe there's two more screws under there. And then we're going to lift up the click wheel. So underneath this plate here we have a ribbon cable, but we don't want to damage this, so we're going to leave this inside of the iPod for now. Next we're going to remove this display glass, and then we've got this small camera glass here that's going to come out with a bit of heat, and then underneath that camera glass there is a small pin that we need to pull out. So now I'm going to apply some heat to the click wheel and we're going to pull that up. So now that we have pretty much everything off of the iPod, I don't know if you can see this, but the screen is bulging up. In theory, the screen as well as the motherboard and battery are all supposed to slide out this way. So they come out the bottom. That's probably not going to work unless we uh, relieve the pressure in the battery. This is by no means recommended, but we're actually going to cut into the battery so we can reduce the pressure. So this is our battery here. And I'm just going to put a uh, bit of a slit in it so we can relieve some of the pressure. So when I did that, I heard some gas escape. This battery is completely discharged, so there's no chance it can explode. There's no energy stored in it. Now that we've got that pressure relieved, you can actually see the screen is now perfectly flat. So now we're going to attempt to slide the screen, battery, motherboard, and also this hold switch ribbon here. We're going to attempt to slide this out of the iPod in this direction. And this has quite a bit of adhesive holding it in, so we're going to put lots of heat on it as we press this out. And hopefully it will come nice and easy. As you can see, I've got it to move a small amount, but you can still feel quite a bit of adhesive holding it all in. So rather than damaging any components, I'm going to actually just put a bit of isopropyl alcohol in the top, and that's going to hopefully loosen the adhesive. Try and get as much of that in there as possible. Unfortunately, the hold switch ribbon cable has actually snapped, as well as the... Uh, battery it was due to this adhesive here so i guess learn from my mistake maybe you could poke something down just to cut that adhesive away from the battery it's out so now we can replace this battery we can try and repair this old switch or replace it so here's part of the old ribbon cable from the old battery which we have still on the uh, motherboard of the ipod so we're going to desolder this and then we have our new battery here and we have to solder this back on so this is how the battery should be soldered in it goes like that and then this tab bends over so the battery butts up to the end of the screen and it goes into that pocket there like that. And as you can see, the iPod is now powered on. Let's see if it can accept a charge so the computer can see it, which is good. Everything looks okay. Okay, so to get this broken cable out, we need to get this metal plate 
out of the way. So there is a screw there, I've already removed it. You can see this metal plate that covers this cable here. It's all been spot welded to the iPod. So all I've done is just get some small snips like this. And I've snipped in here. And I've snipped in here and that allows me to lift this up and out of the way. So once we've done that, we can actually disconnect this cable here. So we have our flex cable out of the way. There's our connector. And the connector on the board is just underneath this plate here. You can see these probe points on the circuit board itself. And I've tested these and our hold switch to turn on, you need to connect this probe point here to this probe point here. So these two top ones, those are good spots to solder onto to uh, reconnect our hold switch. I'm actually going to repair this one using this copper wire that's off this old motor. This was a fan motor out of a microwave or something. So this here is perfect. It is enamel coated so that it is insulated, but it is also very thin. So you can route it through the body of the iPod, solder onto the hold switch without any issues. put some tape over there to protect those two wires. What's left of that ribbon cable we'll just carefully chop off. So here's our two wires coming out of our iPod, and what we need to do is solder them onto our switch. So on this plate here, the orange tab there, the cable comes out this way, so we're going to cut this cable off. And on the switch itself, we've got this solder joint in the center, and this solder joint on the left hand side. These are both common together, so that's going to be going to one of our wires, either one of those solder joints. And then this one on the right, this is the uh, switched contact, so we're going to connect the other wire to that. So we're going to chop that, solder one of these on the left, and the other wire onto the right, and that should make our whole switch functional again. Perfect. So now we're just going to very gently tuck these wires inside of the iPod. There is a bit of room just on top of the battery where they can sit. Still works. So a couple things that I probably should have done with the repair is use some new adhesive. I've actually had to pull this glass out and re-adhere it as the original adhesive just wasn't tacky enough. Same with the camera lens and these two pieces of trim on each end of the iPod. So I've re-adhered them down and now all is good. Everything is working fine. The only thing that I regret doing was putting so much alcohol 
as it has actually damaged the backlight on the display and you can see a few splotches, but it's not too bad. And it's just in future, or if you ever do this, learn from my mistake. And the other thing is that piece of adhesive that holds in the battery, which is right about here, just poke something down just to cut through that adhesive and you'll probably have more of a chance of saving the hold switch as cable, unlike me. And you won't have to fluff around trying to resolder jumper wires onto the switch. But anyways, the iPod is working good. Battery holds a charge now and the screen's not being pushed out. So yeah, very happy. Thanks for watching.